to illustrate the first important concept in calculus we're going to go on a trip now my grandmother lives about 180 miles away from my home and it's a straight shot on the interstate so let's draw a graph of the distance I drive from my house versus the time that it takes me to get to my grandmother's house. We're going to idealize the situation and assume that it's just a straight shot to my grandmother's and what we can see from this graph is that after driving three hours I've gone the 180 miles from my house that leads me to my grandmother's. Well there's nothing new there but let's ask just one more question as a preliminary and that is what is the slope of my distance versus time graph of my trip well of course the slope we can write as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 where the y here is our distance and the x is our time. It's also sometimes written as delta y, how much the y changes, divided by delta x, how much the x changes. And in this case, y2 would be the endpoint, 180 miles from my house, minus my y1 starting at my house, so that would be 0, and the time would be 3 minus 0, my starting time is 0. So that gives us 180 over 3, which divides out to 60. Now, what are the units? Well, you can see the units here are uh, miles versus hours, so that's 60 miles per hour. And my guess is it was already evident, but certainly by now it's evident what it is that the slope means in this case. Slope is simply the speed that I was driving. To be a little more precise we would say that the velocity is 60 miles an hour but the distinction between velocity and speed we're not going to concern ourselves with right now. What we've really done is simply outlined what a trip looks like on a distance versus time graph and learned that the slope has some additional meaning related to this trip. Now as I said this is a fairly idealized graph. Let's try something a little less idealized. Let's imagine that our speeds change in time and so let's look at uh, this kind of a graph. Well let's ask the same question we asked last time namely what is the slope of this graph? Now that may seem a little more nonsensical here because obviously this curve, this set of line segments, doesn't have just one slope. But we can still look at a specific piece of the graph and ask, for example, what was the speed of the car between the first and the second hour? So in that case, our speed, of course, is that same y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which we're going to also write as delta y over delta x. And in this case, we're at the 90 mile mark for y2. We're at the 60 mile mark for y1. And the time would be 2 at the end and 1 at the beginning. And so that gives us 30 over 1, or in other words, my car was going 30 miles an hour along this segment of the trip. But even this is not totally realistic for what it's really like to drive on the interstate to my grandmother's house. So let's go one step further and look at a more realistic trip. 
Well, this is certainly better than what we did in the first case, where we just had a single speed of 60 miles an hour. But you and I both know that this is, even in this case, not all that realistic as to what driving on the interstate is like. What we'd really like to do is deal with a trip like this. Now, what kind of a trip is this? Well, I start off just fine, okay, going along. I've made good time. What is that? In uh, about 45 minutes, I've gone, I don't know, 60 miles or so. And then we encounter this. What is this part right here? Well, this is the well-known Wendy's phenomenon. Start thinking about that frosty or maybe some fries and so you stop all together and as you can see here even though time continues we don't make any progress at all in our distance to my grandmother's house and then what's going on here we're going backwards what's that about well this is the problem of the shortcut I get a little nervous because I spent so much time eating at Wendy's and I'm concerned I'm not going to get there on time and so I decide I'll try a shortcut the only problem is I've never actually tried this shortcut before and it turns out that I get lost and so I actually end up going backwards well then I really want to get there on time and so I wouldn't like to tell you how fast I was going in this interval although unfortunately you could calculate it but the bottom line is that after three hours, I do make it to my grandmother's house. I cover the 180 miles of distance. Okay, fine. So that's what a realistic trip, that's what, that's what trips really look like. Now let's ask the same question we've asked the last two times. What is the slope of this curve? Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. It's not just that the curve has more than one slope, it's that it doesn't have any straight lines at all. Okay. But about 350 years ago, figuring out what it meant to talk about the slope of a curve became the great question of the day in mathematics. People thought about this for a long time. And eventually, someone came up with the idea that if we took a real small part of the curve and then blew it up, well then, this part of the curve looks a lot straighter. It might not be a straight line, but it looks a lot more like a straight line. And in fact, if we keep on zooming in, the so smaller and smaller parts of the curve, the curve gets straighter and straighter and straighter. So that if we were to zoom in infinitely, we could actually find the slope of a curve at a particular point. Well, there's problems with that, of course. We're used to saying that the slope of a curve is, or the, sl the slope between two points, rather, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But in this case, if we keep on blowing up infinitely, then the two points come together. They coalesce into a single point. And so we're talking about not the slope between two points, but the slope of a point. And that starts to sound like some kind of Zen koan. You know, what is the sound of one hand clapping? Similarly, when we get down to actually calculating it, we're going to get delta y over delta x, but because it's the same point, the distance between the two points, there is no two points, it's just one point, it's going to be 0 over 0. And we've been taught for years that anything divided by 0 is undetermined. It makes the TI calculator generate an error. And yet, 
Let's go back and think about what this graph means. This is my distance versus time curve. The slope that we calculated when we did little bits and pieces before was just my speed. It's whatever showed up on my speedometer. Well, when I was doing this trip, there was no mystery about how fast I was going. The speedometer always said some specific number. And so there must be a way to resolve this paradox. There must be a way to turn 0 over 0 into one specific number that represents my speed while I'm driving. Well, solving that is the first big idea in calculus. And it is closely related to what we will call the derivative.